Hey, my name is Javi, and we're talking about this big motherfucker. The Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy Kingdom Titan Class Autobot Arc. And as the name suggests, this is the Autobot ship, the Ark. Only this time, it can transform for vague reasons. Listen, they might have explained it really well in the show, but I don't remember much of the show. I'm gonna be nice and say 6 out of 10. Let's move on. The painting of the sculpting on this figure is awesome. Looks like what I remember from the Transformers G1 cartoon and also Beast Wars. I always like the ship design of the Autobots and it's nice to see that we finally have a figure version of it. It features a lot of mechanical detail all throughout the surface of the figure almost reminds me of another big yellow palooka, but not nearly as impressive. Now, the size, don't get me wrong, is indeed impressive, but I can't help but feel that the large surface area was a missed opportunity to include some more painted detail. And I know that I said that I love it when a Transformers figure is primarily unpainted, means you don't have to worry about paint chipping. And that holds true for this thing. I love that you can just smack this thing without major consequences. However, I can see a talented custom painter going into some of these details and really sprucing them up. The windows of this command tower could be painted a light blue, not unlike some of the areas of this figure. I mean, this is why I'm complaining about it because they painted some areas, but not others. The lack of painted detail just makes this thing come across as a big, cheap toy, like a Tonka figure or something. And let me tell you, this thing ain't cheap. And I didn't get it for free. Links in the description if you want to get one for yourself. The most detailed part of the figure painting-wise has got to be the back. Hasbro did such an excellent job at replicating a glowing effect with these thrusters. And to add to the effect, you get some effects parts, which can separate into six individual pieces. That plugs right into the center of each thruster. And once you get everything set up, it honestly doesn't look that great. You get this wide opening, but just this string of effect. This one's even bent a little bit. Pathetic. These just look mid. What's also mid are these gappy sides. This kind of thing really adds to that cheap top. Tonka toy feel that I was talking about earlier. And before any these come out to play, I know there's an upgrade kit available that includes wing fillers and some additional parts for the robot mode, and you'd be right to point that out. Sorry, I beat you to the punch. And another little detail I want to point out here, the front window was just a piece of clear plastic, and if you look carefully, you can see that there's an actual interior. We'll get a better look at it later. I suppose my complaints about the lack of painted detail just comes across as a little spoiled, because I have been spoiled by a bunch of beautiful looking third party figures. But for an official mainline toy, this isn't that bad. But then you look at the price and then all my criticisms are justified. Anyway, what's a cheap Tonka toy without some gimmicks? Flip this thing over and you can see that I flipped out some landing gear. That just flips up if you so choose. And while we're at the bottom, you get a little sneak peek at the arcs. Arc. And on the back here, there's this little gray switch that if you push, this prolapse falls out. A ramp, it's an awesome feature, but unfortunately, the ramp leads to nowhere. Looks like it leads to death, honestly. Or giant vagina. End of gimmicks, size comparison time. Mamma Mia, it still shocks me every time. Here's Figma Modic Economy, SH Monster Arts Godzilla, Masterpiece MP10 Optimus Prime. My previous review, the big firebird Mooka. And that other big yellow palooka. The Zero One Studio Cell, not Unicron. If you think the arc is big now, it gets bigger. Just like my love for my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for supporting me all this time. Needless to say, I wouldn't be able to make these kind of ridiculous purchases without your guys' help. So thank you forever and always. So here's all your names during the transformation. Let's put a button on that and just get through the first few steps. You'll see why. You gotta be careful with these things, they fall off pretty easily. And let's hold the phone on the transformation for a good while. Because the previously mentioned interior of the ship is actually its own figure. And you get a better look at the interior. That looks great, looks exactly how I remember it. And this little clear yellow globe is removable! I don't recommend it. Very small. Don't lose it. And on the topic of very tiny things, let's talk about my den accessory that I haven't even removed from the packaging. It may not be super noticeable, but this is a disgustingly tiny Optimus Prime figure. I'm not sure I want to open it, but I'm a professional. I have to. Oh, God. 
Oh god. Despite how annoyingly tiny it is, it's a cool accessory. And now I guess you can count this as an Optimus Prime movie. Any of those little square holes? You can fit Optimus right into there. Come on. There you go. So cool, yet so dangerous. Hasbro, you sure those 15-year-olds can handle this? If I was 15, I wouldn't be able to fight the urge to put this thing in my hand. The multiple square holes that you see here indicates that they've probably made a few of these micro figures. But I wouldn't know, because I usually don't care about mainline Transformers figures. Let me know in the comments. Before we get lost in this Lilliputian rabbit hole, let's talk about this block of cheddar. Just gonna put this to the side. That can't go wrong. Really not much to look at here, but you can definitely tell that that's a robot's ass. Oh! And here we have Autobot Mainframe. And while Mainframe is an actual computery word, it doubles as a reference to the animation studio that brought you Beast Wars and Reboot. I don't like talking about Reboot. And the figure itself is pretty cool, if a bit basic. Features a decent amount of mechanical detail, but oh boy, does he got some junk in the trunk. This is less of a backpack and more of a cape. Reminds me of a certain other transforming figure. I don't know why I keep mentioning Digimon. No one gives a shit. There's not too much to this guy. Pretty self-explanatory. You do get some light piping on the eyes. And you also get a swivel at the head. Rotation at the shoulder. Back kibble blocks a 360 rotation. Arm moves out. Bicep swivel. Bend at the elbow. No wrist swivel. We really are in main line territory. A limited waist swivel due to the back. Rotation at the hips. Can't move back that far because, you know. Hey, but at least you get one up. Thigh swivel. Bend at the knee. Ankle swivel. A fortunate byproduct of the transformation. Some masterpiece transformers don't even have that. And a damn good ankle pivot. So this guy has a mix of excellent articulation with not so excellent articulation. So basically, a damn good deluxe class figure. And to prove my point, here he is next to insert War for Cybertron deluxe class figure that I've reviewed here. Alright, more like a Voyager class. But this was a deluxe class back in my day. We'll save the rest of the size comparisons for later. But for now, mainframe here actually has a third mode. So let's put that back cape to good use. And here we have Teletran 1, and I love this thing. The Autobots computer, again, exactly as how I remember it. It's got a console, some screens with some specs on them, Optimus Prime search history. Of course, the computer's not to scale with the included Optimus figure, but it should look good next to Legends class figures. It's time to watch Infowars. Just... Uh, don't turn it around. That's some grade A body horror. On the back here, you actually have this little thing, which I believe is the kind of probe that Transformers send out to go scan for alternate modes. I swear I saw this thing in the Beast Wars intro. And talking about Beast Wars, you get the golden disc. And not just one of them. You get the Earth golden disc and the Vok golden disc. If you don't know what that means, Vok off. Watch Beast Wars. That reminds me, it's been a while since I've done a Beast Wars review, huh? Does this count? Really cool feature, but I don't like how loose it is. Kind of annoying when you're trying to handle this thing. But to be fair, you're not really gonna play with a computer like that, are you? Let's do some size comparisons to satiate any curiosities. Hey, here's Monica, Godzilla, Prime, Mooka! And Prime again, why not? So, that's pretty much it for this little guy. Let's get back to the main event. Where were we? Oh yeah, your names. Thanks again.
The transformation is pretty simple, by the way. Thanks to these beautifully... Ah, Jesus Christ, Hasbro. Invest in a booklet. Great googly moogly. Jesus, this thing is big. And I love it. But I shouldn't let the size of this guy fully influence my opinion on how this thing looks. So despite the size, the robot mode is awesome. Not too much new detail is revealed. Everything is what we saw before. But for all of my shit talk about this thing feeling like a cheap taco toy, the robot mode is still great. Now it feels like money well spent. There may be some Transformers fans out there that are disappointed that the art didn't transform into Omega Supreme, but this design is still a lot of fun, if a little basic. I can't help but feel that this thing looks like one of those GoBots figures. Not those, but the the baby kind. But if that's the case, then Goo Goo Gaga, bitch. I like it a lot. Head sculpt is great. Looks like the Autobot logo, get it? And this head also features a bit of light piping, which could have easily been a light up feature. Doesn't matter. Or does it? Discuss in the comments. But no matter how cool he looks or how big he is, is he fun to handle? Oh... Yeah! This thing is amazingly solid, and it had better be for the size. The ratchet joints that they use definitely carry the weight. And oh, how hefty it is. But let's stop beating around your mama's bush. And start talking about the swivel at the head. With the amount of real estate and material here, it could have been a ball joint, but whatever. An incredibly tight! The shoulder ratchet here is stupid tight. I honestly thought I was gonna break it the first time I played with it. Arm moves out. Bicep swivel. Bend at the elbow. Wrist swivel. Wrist ratchets. That's a little excessive. Hinge joint at the thumb. And a hinge joint at all of his fingers. With the amount of space and real estate you'd think he'd have individually articulated fingers, but never mind. Waist swivel. And now it's camera B's turn. Rotation at the hips. To go even a little more up. Oh, can't move. For. And you know that there's gonna be a- Oh, oh no. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Nice swivel. Bend at the knee. No up and down at the ankle. But you do get an ankle pivot. Kind of a shitty one, but at least it's there. Posability for this hunk of junk is actually not bad at all. I'd even wager to say that it's pretty damn good. But any action pose you try to get this guy in will pale in comparison to him just standing there menacingly. A lot of fun to play with, but just such a novelty to hold. I hope you weren't taking a drink every time I said this thing was big. Hey, ears, Monica, Godzilla, OP leader, insert war for Cybertron figure here, and the Zero One Studio Cell. He He's actually a bit bigger. I may be making a big deal out of nothing, but I think this guy is a lot of fun. Get it if you can, if you have the space. But before I reveal the score, I forgot to mention the included sticker, which is all well and good. Primus knows I need a replacement. I like to rub Dinobot's face for fun. Ah. Ah, fuck, it's getting hot, man. Next time, we'll be doing another Failbox stream. Use hashtag JobbyFailbox, by the way. But after that, I will finally get some head. Oh!